Yo, Philly 254 living life. Back at it. So it's been a while since we did a face to face video, but we're here now. So today's video was supposed to be about um, Aliens Dark, not Dark Resurrection, Dark Descent. I was going to do a little how well does it play? You know, t one half talking about the ROG ally, ROG, R O G. Li or the other half, and the other half talking about the Steam Deck, but that kind of made me think. I've been seeing conversations going around, and you know, folks doing all this talking and whatnot. You know, some folks for the Steam Deck, some folks for the Ally, and whatnot. And so I decided to just bring it up. You know, this is gonna be basically a Steam Deck versus ROG Ally. But here's the thing, y'all know me. I shoot it off the cuff. I'm just straight off the dome with it. This ain't a full format, and I'm not going to do the traditional, here's the specs for this one, and then here's the specs for this one kind of video. It's going to be some, you know, a little conversation. You know, you know how I do it. So, we'll start, you know what, we'll start with the old, with the, with the old school, old faithful. Steam Deck. So, here's the thing about Steam Deck. The difference between the Steam Deck and the ROG Ally, which is best? Which is, what do you want to do? A lot of people are saying, man, sell your Steam Deck. Or they sell, they're actually selling their Steam Deck and get the ROG Ally, the ROG Ally. And trying to, you know, endorse that for everyone else. Here's the thing, man. The one you get is what is going to be dependent on what you're trying to, what you're really trying to do. You know, so in this whole Steam Deck versus Ally situation, which is the best, it's really dependent. You know, they're both the best depending on which one, you, what you're trying to do. And by that, I mean, we'll start with the Steam Deck since it, was, since it came out first. The Steam Deck, when it first, when it, when you, when you buy, purchase a Steam Deck, when you purchase a Steam Deck, you're just, it's basically, it's close, it's basically almost a console. So, and by that, I mean, you purchase it, you bring it on, or you get it, it gets, gets delivered, you open the box, you know what I'm saying, you do your little stuff, put it on a charger, whatever. You turn it on and you sign in the Steam. Once you sign into Steam, you're gonna see your Steam library, and from there you just run. You download whatever you want to download, right? But of course, we all know not every game is compatible with the Steam Deck, and there are certain things you can do to make other games compatible um, or whatnot, and uh, or even make them run better, even if they are already compatible. Maybe they're not Steam Deck verified, but they are just. You know they're playable but the, the certain things you can do with different proton versions or whatnot but the reality of it you don't have to touch any of that you can sit there and play your games that do work with the steam deck and just wait patiently for certain games who are not steam deck compatible or who are playable but not in the best shape when playable and you just wait for the proton versions to update or whatnot and eventually you'll get your steam deck your steam deck will may play that game or may play it in a better form or be more smooth or whatnot right you can just do that you don't have to do anything else right you can literally get your steam deck do whatever initial software updates or whatever and just start playing whatever you can play on your steam deck just like that now if you want to go deep into the weeds with it man you can you can go to desktop mode and you can set up you can set up desktop mode jump into desktop mode you can download different versions of proton ge proton you can download BattleNet, epic games um different different uh, uh add-ons and plugins and whatnot for the steam that you can go full in in desktop mode and set everything up you definitely can but it's not required at all it's not part of the experience you, you can play you can get your steam deck and never touch desktop mode whatsoever matter of fact desktop mode is literally that desktop mode it's separate it's completely separate from the gaming mode if you were to go into desktop mode um and play or download obs and start screen recording obs and then switch to desktop mode obs will stop will stop recording because you're switching modes it even does the entire booting animation to go into gaming mode because gaming mode is literally a separate mode from desktop mode just like that so the thing about steam deck is probably closer to a console than it is to a straight up pc but it definitely you can definitely use the pc features of course with it being linux based there's the compatibility with certain games or whatnot but we'll get into that 
and then the only issue and so well actually we'll get into it right now the bigger issue is not all games on steam ironically are playable on the steam deck right um sometimes the games just aren't compatible sometimes the games just don't look that well on a small screen because of small text or whatnot uh sometimes the games and barring just technical change you know the technical reasons why for example the specs are just too much for the steam deck or whatever sometimes the games have can be perfectly playable as far as the technical situation technical side but it has anti-cheat and steam deck is not does not play well with anti-cheat sometimes you know some games work well with it some games don't um for example well i don't think i don't think dead by daylight has anti-cheat it has that type of anti-cheat but it has some type of anti-cheat situ- software but i don't think it's the, the typical anti-cheat software but dead by daylight for the longest was not compatible with steam deck did not play in nothing guess what it's compatible now you know what i'm saying you know, i don't know if you can hear my dog over here sneezing and stuff it's compatible now you know what i'm saying and you just had to wait it out now it took about a year a little bit over a year for it to get compatible but it's compatible now but that's the thing you got to worry about if you're not you know some games may play well technically on the, on the technical standpoint but that anti-cheat it's a no-go destiny no go for honor no go you know what i'm saying it, it is what it is man so that's the, and that's on the steam deck side right so sum it all up steam deck is like a console with a full-on desktop experience but you do not have to touch the desktop experience you just turn it on and you may have to keep it updated in the sense of just updating the little update button in the settings which i mean you do that with xbox i mean you know xbox and playstation you got to update everything nowadays so you know one thing to update you hit the button and it updates everything you're good to go but you don't have to touch the desktop whatsoever you can just get in and play so let's jump to rlg ally let's put it over here let's put it over here oh so rlg ally what's the thing about rlg ally new kid on the block and not the first windows based handheld but definitely i would say for the power that it packs and it's still within the same price range as the steam deck not the lower end steam deck the 300 dollar or whatever it is 399 whatever but the mid the mid tier steam deck still within that price range right so good competition right so the pros on this one is pretty simple man it definitely definitely has that windows experience so it's just, with it being based on windows windows 11 if it's on steam it's gonna play as long as it was within the spec to the actual handheld right but it doesn't stop at steam xbox game pass epic BattleNet. it's gonna play because it's windows it's a windows machine right steam deck is not a windows machine it's living space it has to have a proton layer for compatibility reasons this does not do all that so if it's win- it will play it will play because it's windows but here's the thing this where it's the steam deck you can go into gaming mode or it, boots, it literally boots into gaming mode you can do that and it will never you never will have to worry about it whatsoever you know what i'm saying you never have to worry about going to the desktop or anything like that this is a little different it started from the, from the jump the setup is completely different for example you jump into you you boot up your, your your ally and this is what happens it's just like setting up a windows machine you go to the entire windows setup you sign into windows it does like an initial update if i remember correctly it does an initial update and then once you once you sign into windows it does that initial update then you got to go into your windows updates just like you would into any into your windows machine which i don't know if you can see it but i'm pressing a little button you go to the software center or uh, update center or whatever it's called and you got to update all your different drivers and whatnot right now you got to keep those in and keep in mind you got to keep that maintained so you got to check that periodically it's going to offer you to log into office why on a gaming machine right log into office so, you know i'm not checking my emails on this man you know what i'm saying so you got to log into office right now the art now the ally does have a gaming mode of its own but it's not really a gaming mode it's more of an application and it's the armory crate so I'm gonna grab, push this little button here. You see, I don't know how well it's gonna show up on the camera once it shows up, but there you go, Armory Crate. 
right? So the armor crate loads, and now you think you're ready? No, you're not ready, homie. Because now you gotta update the armory crate. It has its own updates it's gotta go through, which I'm not, I was about to go through to show you, but it has its own updates you gotta do. Um, Asus has its, its own updates for its firmware. And and here's and we'll we'll talk about this in a little bit, but just watch it with the firmware updates, just FYI. But Asus has its own updates for its firmware. So that's three different systems you have to update within here. Now, as far as the armory, armory crate, you got to understand, like I said, this is an application, not a mode. So you're, just, you're literally just launching this. But Windows is still underneath. Windows is still there. You know what I'm saying? I don't know how we saw that. Windows is still there. You know what I'm saying? So it's not like desktop mode on the Steam Deck where you have to switch modes to go to, desk, to the desktop. And then you have to switch modes back to go into the gaming mode. Nah, man. This is just a this is just a skin. It's just to make it look pretty, to make it make it make it so where you can find your games a lot more a lot more organized and don't have to go searching through your start menu or looking on a desktop or whatnot. Oh man, he over here sneezing still, man. So this is in in with this being a Windows machine, there's gonna be the setbacks because Windows we all know Windows could be quirky. Applications won't stop launching for whatever reason. Sometimes I say not launch, but won't you won't close? They won't close down properly for whatever reason. So now you gotta launch a task manager and kill that task. You know what I'm saying? Updates constantly have to happen, and sometimes certain drivers need to be updated separate from other drivers. So it's not like you can just update all the drivers right then and then. No, one driver may be cool today, and you did your little updates, and then tomorrow the next set of drivers may need to get some updates. It happens, man. And you got to keep that in mind. It's going to be a lot of maintenance. This is a PC. So whereas the Steam Deck was, is a more of like a console with PC, with the abilities of an actual computer, PC, whatever. This is literally a PC with console abilities. Basically a PC in the, in the shell of a console, or I say console, a shell of a handheld. You got to keep that in mind. So this is not exactly just plug and go let's put it this way steam deck you can probably get a steam deck for your son or a non computer savvy person and they'll just play they may find certain games that work some games that don't but i mean if you get an xbox you're not gonna play a playstation exclusive game i don't know if xbox has any xbox exclusive games these days but if they do you're not gonna get a, you're not gonna be able to play xbox exclusive games on a playstation you know what I'm saying? So, people are kind of used to that. Not every game that's available in the world is going to work, right? So, you get a Steam Deck, you hand that to somebody, they turn it on, they do their little initial updates, and then they can just go. This is, gonna, this is a PC. If they're not PC savvy, if they're not used to working with a PC and dealing with the quirkiness of Windows constantly, you know what I'm saying? If they got to call the help desk for everything, and there is no help desk for this now, this might not be the game. This not may not be something for them. This is more for someone who already knows a PC. If you already game on a PC or at least understand how to work a PC, pretty pretty nice, pretty pretty deeply, you all right. You all right. Steam Deck could be. I mean, Steam Deck. The Ally could be for you because you understand. Therefore, you can work with the quirks. You can know how to figure out the kinks and the workarounds and navigate the weirdness of Windows sometimes. And for that, what you get is a device that can play just about any game that that will run on Windows. You don't have to worry about an, an easy anti cheat or none of that. It just works now, so long as the specs are within the range of the actual ally, right? But again, you got to deal with those quirks. If you, it's it's so so to kind of go back to what I was saying. It depends which one's the best. It depends on what you're trying to do, or uh, what type of person or gamer you are. You know what I'm saying? If you if you ain't got no problem going into the weeds and messing with drivers and updates and whatnot, if they, if it's needed, you go and get your ally, man. If you would rather not really have to deal with any of that, and maybe you learn want to want to learn it in a slower pace, but in the, at least in the very beginning, don't even want it. Don't even want to worry about that. Steam Deck is where it's at. Real talk, real talk. Because the thing is, remember what I said. The Steam Deck. You can just get it and go, and some games work, some games don't. You just have to deal with it. There are a lot of workarounds for a lot of games that supposedly don't work. You just have to go into desktop mode and kind of dig in the weeds a little bit. 
You know what I'm saying? It, but the only difference between that and the ally having to dig in the weeds with the ally is it's completely optional with that. You can just roll with what games don't work, or I mean, what games do work and call it a day until, you know, Proton updates to a level that will allow them to work. This is not optional. You got to keep those drivers updated. You got to, you, sometimes you got to deal with the weird stuff that Windows does. And that's the, and that's the strength of having an OS that's kind of tailored, made, and optimized towards, or that Valve is kind of optimized for their devices, right? Versus, uh, Asus or Asus just, you know, using Windows and saying, hey, can we use y'all's operating system for this handheld? You know what I'm saying? They didn't make Windows. They didn't optimize Windows. They're just working it and skinning it as best as they can to work with what we got. And I'm not hating. They did a great job. I'm not hating. I'm just saying, understand what you're getting into, right? And that's, and that's why I tell, that's why I say, man, don't, you know, we don't have to go tell folks, whichever one you got, if you got an ally, you don't have to tell folks, man, F a Steam Deck. No, nah, man, don't, don't hate on them. You know what I'm saying? Let them do what they do. You know what I'm saying? I love my Steam I still play my Steam Deck. I play my Steam Deck over my, now nah, I've been playing the ally more and more because I've been testing and everything for videos and whatnot. And of course, you know, every time I play a game, I play it on ally on the Steam Deck to kind of get it for reviews or whatever, but I still play my Steam Deck. It still gets that play all day. Certain games get played on the Ally and won't get played on the Steam Deck flat out for my enjoyment. It's like Street Fighter 6, and that's based on I just don't like the D-pad on the Steam Deck versus the Ally. You know what I'm saying? But I've been saying since day one, I didn't like the, the D-pad on the Steam Deck. It's just it's just a pain for fighting games. But if someone's playing it and if someone's got a Steam Deck, don't man, you know, don't be getting on someone just for getting an Ally. I mean, shoot. Yeah, so what? I mean, it technically it will it, it may fulfill all their needs. So long as they understand what they're getting into, what you hating for. You know, play all while you hating. You know what I'm saying? Let them get what they want to get. Let them do what they want to do. They like what they like. It's, it's all good. And it, it, at the end of the day, competition, competition breeds nothing but success for us, the consumer. Because the next generation of handhelds, are gonna get better and better, and they're gonna stay within that price range that we like. Cause you, we all remember when the Steam Deck, when the Steam Deck dropped, or even when it was uh, announced and whatnot, we started seeing all these other handhelds for like fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars or whatnot. And they talk about, oh man, we got specs way better than that, and we on Windows. All you gotta do is pay us fifteen hundred dollars. No man, I ain't trying to pay all that. You know what I'm saying? The Ally is actually. Now, they say they advertise it as twice as powerful, but it's not. But it is more powerful than the Steam Deck. Let's be real. And it is an aff affordable as hell because it's around the same price and the same price range as the Steam Deck. You know what I'm saying? You can't hate that. You can't hate that at all. You know what I'm saying? So and now I'm going to reverse it back a little bit where I mentioned the um, the firmware updates on Ally. Yeah, the firmware uh, firmware updates. It's been getting you know some 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 flack for the firmware update has kind of messed up some um, the, some of the performance of the Ally and whatnot, and it's been causing a whole lot of issues. I think it's even cause, been causing issues with the uh, SD cards getting getting ruined in the Ally, and people are quick you know especially Steam Deck people are quick to hop and hop on that and say see. It's messed up. Why are you even getting that, man? It's killing y'all's SDs. It's a you know Asus is is known for this. Asus has a reputation. They don't know what they're doing. Blase, blase. Let's be real and let's be real. You know what I'm saying? I'ma spit it real because I'ma always spit it real. Steam Deck has had some issues too. Y'all don't remember that that one update they did where it changed. They decided to change the location. Of the uh, uh was it of the where games are stored on or or where the game caches are stored, I believe, and it just messed up everyone's games. I don't, it might not be the game cache, it might have been the location. I can't remember, I can't remember exactly what it was. And they quickly, they quickly fixed that with the next update, you know what I'm saying? And people saying having issues with the ally messing up some SD cards or whatnot, making them unreadable. Steam Deck had that same issue at one point, they fixed it though. So you got to keep in mind, you can't compare what a uh, what a week and a half, two week old device to one that's been here for over a year. You know what I'm saying? They've had time to work the kinks out. Give Asus time to work the kinks out. So long as Asus or Asus or whatever, so long as they can go ahead and continue to support it the same way Valve has supported the Steam Deck, 
we it's a win-win homie it's a win-win my only complaint right now with this my only real complaint is i'm having trouble finding cases for it you know what i'm saying hopefully we get some more cases i'm still riding around naked you know what i'm saying so it is what it is to sum it all up steam deck versus ally which is best it's whatever you try to do homie if you're trying to tinker if you're cool with windows and you're cool with tinkering if you're a pc gamer and you understand how all that works and you cool with all that i'd say get you an ally if you just want to get in and go if you just want to support valve if you just you know you don't really want to fool with windows and you just want to get on this linux side of things get you a steam deck you can still get in the weeds if you want to but it's completely optional you don't really have to you know what i'm saying anyway that's my two cents my steam deck versus ally two cents if you like more steam deck and rlg ally news reviews walkthroughs gameplays lives like and subscribe cruise through the playlist and i'm out